Bon tardi innovators. Welcome to Innovation C, the ninth digital conference Hope from a Rock. Our rock, Nos Barranca, has the shape of a heart and is seen by many visitors as an island of love. We have overcome so much over the years, and now it's time again to overcome many new uncomfortable changes. COVID-19 really pulled our pants down. We can't always be positive or be jolly, not even under the Caribbean sun. But we can always come together and share a message of hope and see how we can pull each other up. Today, we have a full Autobanda edition. Three speakers who have worked in the same neighborhood on three different projects. All three projects bring various opportunities to our island and our people. I would like to start this edition um, with mentioning them all three. Hope from a rock shows that we have a lot to be thankful for and that hope resides in all of us. I would like to share that this picture, I have to switch, hold on. I would like to share that this picture with you um, that Innovation C, uh, Innovation C received from Chris Bausta, from Dina. This shows the major developments that have been taking place in the Riff area. By now, the hotel is open and there's still construction going in the mangrove park, but the hospital is, is finished. As the new Curacao Medical Center was being built, Corendon created a, a mangrove beach resort uh, across the street, which led to the development of this whole new mangrove park. If you look all to the, way, to the left side um, of the picture, there are two mega piers over there. These three speakers all had something to do with it. Our first speaker, Jason Obispo, is a spokesperson for the development in this area, and I'm very curious about what he has to tell us. The second speaker, Alton Pass, is the president of Fundación Alton Pass and has his own rehabilitation center in Colón. That's on this side of this picture that you can see. He, is also, uh, he also has a mesmerizing snap smile, just like Jason. Our third speaker of today is Miguel Gonzalez Perez Chantil and he will show us the end result of what you're seeing in this picture. Miguel is the communication and PR manager of Corandon Mangrove Beach Resort, and he energizes you um, with his passion for life. This edition is full of hope from the other side. So let's get started. If you take the chance, uh, if you have the chance, take a look at our Facebook page later, and you can see how this whole development started. I would like you all sitting in the chat room right now to turn off your phone or at least the noise of your phone so you can really focus on what these presenters are going to tell. They really made the effort to make a presentation for you and it would be nice to give them that respect. But no, with no longer ado, I would like to ask Jason to come on stage. Jason, are you there? We always have a little bit issue um, with beginning, and there is Jason. Jason. Hi. Hi, uh, Andy. Thanks for the introduction. Um, well, very nice. Very nice set. Actually, hello, everybody. Uh, like Andy said, my name is Jason Obispo. Uh, today, I want to talk about uh, hope, uh, especially for uh, the Rift area, which currently I am the spokesperson for. Uh, but first, I wanted to introduce myself. Um, let's go to the presentation immediately. Okay. So, I'm going to take the stage and give you this the whole oh, story so, to yourself. So I'm all alone on the stage right now. Okay, well, thank you. I'm, I'm going to. Jason is also a radio host, and you can see it. He immediately takes over, and I love it. <laughs> stage, Jason. Thank you, Andy. Well, um, again, hello, everybody. My name is Jason Obispo, like Andy said. Um, like I said uh, before, uh, today I want to talk about uh, uh, hope, uh, especially for the Rift area. I'm the spokesperson for uh, this uh, this project, this brilliant project, and later on I'm going to tell you all about it. Um, I, I've made a presentation, so I'm going to put it on here so you all can see. I hope you all can see my presentation right now. Yes. Well, it's hope from a rock, and you know I put a rock on it because yeah, I know it's uh, my creative side uh, to it. Like I said, I'm Jason Obispo, I'm 40 years old. I was uh, born and raised in Curacao in a family of five. Um, currently, I'm an HR policy advisor. So officially, actually, I'm an um, HR uh, advisor, policy advisor with the government of Curacao. 
Um, I'm doing that for almost 10 years now, but actually my passion is for media, especially radio. I have a love for radio. Um, I'm going to tell you later on about that. Uh, I live with my partner. We have no kids, but we do have two dogs, with which we consider our kids, Binky and Jin. That's our two dogs. Let's go to a little background of me. I graduated in 98 in high school in Curacao at a Peter Stuyvesant College. And then I moved to uh, Holland, where I, with, where I lived for 12 years. Uh, first, I started in Arnhem, and then I moved to Amsterdam, and then I lived, uh, lived two years in, in Arnhem, and for 10 years in Amsterdam. Uh, my background is communications, and then I moved, I did uh, organizational development and culture at the University of Amsterdam. And like I said before, uh, I have a passion, I have my, a love for radio. So in 2015, when I came back to, um, to Curacao, actually I moved back to Curacao in 2010, but in 2015, I started a media career. And I started at a TCFM, the radio belonging to uh, the uh, Tele Curacao. And in 2018, I uh, switched Tele Curacao to Laser 101. This is much smaller radio. And they have uh, more, more, much more international music, which I can relate to. So that's why I chose uh, Laser 101 over T uh, TCFM. More about my background. I'm a co-owner of uh, Communications and Media Concepts as a media, a cross-media um, production company. And from that uh, Communications and Media Concept, we produced uh, a lot of uh, uh, media productions. Uh, like House of Cocktail, uh, we did a cover and um, a, a koi as well. A koi is um, a koi is is a, a, a program, it's a TV program actually about carnival. Normally, we all we always uh, use carnival as a party period, but there, there is an organizational side to it. So a koi was uh, concentrated, was focusing more all about the. Um, organizational side of uh, the carnival. I'm a co-owner of another uh, uh, company, this Brain.9, and we offer uh, training, uh, communications training, management training, and training of personal development. Let's see, in April 2009, I got a phone call from Jeffka Martina, and she asked me if I wanted to join a very beautiful project, the Riff Area Development, if I wanted to be the uh, spokesperson for this program. My impulsive reaction was, yeah, let's do this. Uh, but then I was like, oh, uh, I've never been a spokesperson before. I never did that. Uh, it was challenging for two, especially two reasons. Uh, I was never a spokesperson, like I said before in my life. So I had no idea what it would, what it would be like. And the second reason was it is a huge program and it would mean a lot for the development of this island. It would mean hope for this island. So it was very nice to be part of this one. So I accepted the challenge and yeah, here I am. So spokesperson for the RIF development. And he approached me a few weeks ago and he asked me if I wanted to be a, spo a speaker in this, uh, in this, in his, um, his uh, platform. Again, my impulsive reaction, I'm a very impulsive person. My impulsive reaction was, yes, I want to do it. But then uh, I start, started thinking, what is hope? Um, hope to me is more like a feeling rather than a definition. So it was very difficult for me to uh, answer my question. So I looked it up and I got three uh, uh, meanings which I can relate to. One, the first one is a feeling of expectation and desire for a certain thing to happen. It's a feeling of trust. And the third one is um, you want something to happen or to be the case. So that's why um, it's more easier now to lead you into the hope for the Rift area, my hope for the Rift area. Why is development necessary in this um, uh, area? Well, the mangrove forest is a breeding place for mosquitoes. In, uh, in, this, in that area where the mangrove, uh, mang mangrove forest is, um, the, 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 the bottom of the, of the inland water is very contaminated and don't have a flow to the sea for, the, for that water. So it stays there 
and then it makes it easier for the mosquitoes to breed. So that's why we have all those mosquitoes in this in that area. And the mangrove area, like I said, is contaminated and infected. Um, the, uh, the development is necessary for the upgrading of the pumping station is necessary for um, the discharge uh, for the discharge pipes. They do not meet the requirements after expansion of the neighborhood. We have now two cruise terminals. We have now a uh, Curacao a medical center in that area. Um, the Courtyard Marriott Hotel will be coming soon. And now we have we just had the opening of a hotel, the Corandon Hotel. So the discharge pipe do not meet the requirements as the neighborhood is expanding. So that's why it's necessary to replace them and renew them as well. The benefits of this development, uh, the mangrove area will be fixed. The, this area will be mosquito free. Uh, the pumping station and the discharge pipes will be replaced. They will all be, re be replaced. There will be a better connection to our city center to, um, to from, the, from the cruise terminal to Otterbanda. There's a better connection to the rift area as well. Besides that, it is better for the nature. Uh, it will be a recreation area. The visitor center, there will be a visitor center with information about the mangroves. It's good for the economic development and the infrastructure will be improved. I'm going to go through the projects of this uh, uh, program. We call it the program because it's a huge program, like I said, and consisting of six public projects and three private projects. The six public, public project projects are uh, financed by the government and the three private pro projects are private projects like the three hotels like I'm going, I'm going to show you as well. This will be the area like you see, the whole area, um, what we will be developing. You see the mangrove park one, you see the Corandon Hotel, the part one, part two of Corandon Hotel. And you, there will be a mangrove park. There will be as, uh, as well uh, the renovation of uh, uh, Renaissance Hotel and a canal from to where you can canal from one part to the other. Mangrove Park One. The bottom of the inland water in the area is contaminated. The consequence is the roots of the mangroves are very contaminated. Another consequence is that you have to take out the contaminated roots because they don't have a function anymore. Instead of uh, 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 taking out the, the uh, mangroves, we're going to create a park, the first mangrove park in the city center. We should be proud of that because that uh, the mangrove park in Curacao will be the first park in the world, first mangrove park in the world, uh, in the city center. We will create as well a pedestrian uh, uh, walkway and a watchtower in the park. This is the area where you where the park will be. This is just behind the, uh, the Piscina Benilejito. We all know the Piscina Benilejito, so the mangrove park will be next to it. That um, I just um, put this picture in here for for a, a, a impression of how our mangrove park will be. There will be a walkway in mangrove park one, and then a mangrove park two. The Tula monument that will be in, uh, in the area of the Tula uh, uh, monument. There will be three mangrove islands next to each other, and but that's in the second phase of the whole program. Here you can see where the mangrove uh, park, the second mangrove park will be. It's right behind the Tula mon monument. Like I said before, the pumping station and the discharge pipes, the renovation of the pump, uh, pumping station and the discharge pipes is the expansion of the neighborhood. Like I said, the neighborhood is expanded. So we you don't have um, uh, the capacity to, uh, to, to, to um, have all the discharge in that area. So that's why we have to, re to, to renew the pumping station and the discharge pipes. The two cruise terminals has been, is new, uh, are new there. There's a new hospital in that area. The renovation of the pumping station is very necessary and expansion of the discharge pipes go 
all the way to plane of here. There will be a canal as well. The canal is good for a connection between the mangrove park one and the mangrove park two. Locals and tourists can canal from one point to the other, and that will mean more employment opportunities on the island. Like I said, we're going to be talking about hope today. Well, this is a canal in the mangrove park one. This is the impression of the canal in mangrove park one. And the watchtower I talked about before, that will also be in the mangrove park one. We will have Nexus Road. The Nexus Road is from the cruise terminal to Otrabanda. Now, uh, currently, the tourists will have to walk all the way around to get into the center uh, of Otrabanda. But now, with, with this street, with this access road, they can go direct. This is the right connection between the cruise terminals to the city center. There will be benches to sit and relax on the side. There will be a sidewalk as well. So it will be a very vibrant area at the end of this program. Here you can have an impression of how this uh, um, access road will be. With the benches and the sidewalk, like I said. And last but not least, there will be a visitor center. A visitor center will create opportunity for locals and tourists to get to know more about the, the history of the reef area. They will be, uh, um, there will be an information center as well for the functions of the mangroves. The information for students is very good for students. Uh, if they have a, pro a project at, at school, that they can go there and make it a project um, out of the mangrove information they got. And as well, um, this will be uh, empl employment opportunities for locals. And then we'll go to the private investments. The reconstruction of Hotel Renaissance uh, uh, Curacao Resort and Casino, it's already done. The 30 million guilders was invested for this project. The construction of Hotel Corendon means 127 million guilders. And that will be for the whole hotel phase one and phase two will be finished in 2021. But Miguel can tell you later more about that. And the construction of Hotel Courtyard Marriott would mean 58 million guilders and it will be finished in 2022. Hotel Courtyard Marriott, I'll give you an impression of how it would be at the end of this pro uh, program. This will be our courtyard uh, hotel in the Rift area. It's a very beautiful uh, place for people to go and hang out, uh, or it would mean more op employment opportunities as well. And Hotel Corendon, not to steal uh, Miguel's thunder, I'm just going to put it here. The phase one is already done, and then later on we'll be in phase two of this uh, hotel. So to recap, this will be the area where that will be developed in to the, at the end of 2021. Well, with the COVID right now, I don't know how long longer it will take, but let's say at the end of 2021 was the plan do for this project to be finished and to me this is all about creating hope for our island it's all about uh, creating hope for our people that's why it's very beautiful a very beautiful and challenging project and that's why i'm very proud to be part of it and last but not least i want to take say thanks to our stakeholders hotel corendon thank you very much hotel courtyard marriott Renaissance Curacao Resort and Casino, the Cruise Terminals 1 and the Cruise Terminal 2, uh, the Rift Stadium, Rift Zwembad, Aqualectra, SVB, ACU, Curacao Medical Center, residents of Otterbanda, and the merchandisers in Otterbanda. Well, I think that's all for me. Um, like I said, it's all about creating hope for our island, creating hope for the people. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, thank you, Jason. That was a, a lot of information in that short presentation, and I wish we could like slow pace back uh, uh, through those pictures because I saw some very beautiful ones. Um, uh, uh, I have a, a specific question. Uh, someone asked uh, already uh, a white permit, uh, a huge hotel over there who decides that that hotel was there uh, way before this decision 
was made. So just to answer that question, um, and uh, what's happening now is that it's being developed in uh, the most sustainable way possible. Uh, and I, I, can you tell a little bit about that? Uh, what the sustainability idea is behind this? You, you, you bring, I, I couldn't hear. I couldn't hear the question. Um, can, can you repeat it, please? Sure. Can you uh, explain a little bit, elaborate a little bit, what sustainability uh, um, ideas behind the, the development of the mangrove park and why it's so important? I mean, you you said something a little bit about it, but can you give a little bit more information why it's so important to develop the mangrove park right now? Yeah, because you know um, the mangrove they, they have a, they have a very important function. They, is, it, they are protection for our coast. So that's why it's very important for the mangroves to stay there. But they cannot, they cannot function well if the, if the bottom of the inland water is contaminated. They have a lot of discharge and with um, 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 poison uh, uh, stuff in it. So that's why it's very, they cannot function anymore. And our ecosystem is really dead if, the, if we have all the discharge, if the water doesn't flow to the sea. So that's why we have we have to fix that, and in order to fix it, we have to take out a few uh, of the contaminated uh, mangroves. But instead of that, for development of the area and for development of the economy, we have to do something about it. We just can't we can't just take them out and leave it just like there. We have to like the area is developing with uh, with the um, uh, construction of uh, very beautiful hotels. Well, that's why we have to do something about it as well. So why not make something for our people, create opportunities for, for um, uh, more employment op opportunities and make a park, the first park in the city, in the center of first mangrove park in the center of the city. Yep. That's why it's very important. I, I had my concerns in the beginning and I got a, a um, a, a tour through the area um, from several hotels and, and several stakeholders and I have been, um, there has been a lot of thought put into this and um, there has been some changes in, in how the mangroves grow but um, what we're getting back in return is one, we get, we, we're remaining our mangroves mm -hmm. um, and second, um, there is going to be some, some investment coming back that are going back into our people and if we don't now and um, we're going to lose the mangrove part uh, on the long term so i think um, that's the way uh, we have to look at sustainability right now um, uh, sustainable tourism uh, it will not only make us happy as uh, as a community but also the tourists that will well, come to the, to the exactly. island exactly well we have a lot of, of of problems with the access road but the access road is very good there because we have a direct connection to the uh, city center of Otrabanda. Now we don't have that. So it will be a vibrant area with a lot of opportunities, a lot of facilities. So it's very, very nice. I, I have one question though. Maybe you can answer that. Do you know if there are secret plans to make a little train station that has a train go from there to Punda? Or is that much to ask for now? You know too much. You know too much, Andy. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it, we talked about it. We talked about it, but it's in the future plans. Now we're going to focus on this area first. And then probably, you, you who knows? It will be. It will come through. It's all about making dreams come true and making um, creating hope. Okay, awesome. Um, for everyone that anyone that has a question, uh, drop them in uh, um, in the chat box or in the questions. Uh, we'll have a round table later where we'll discuss uh, it all together, together with Alton Pass and together with uh, Jason and of course with, with Miguel. Mm -hmm. um, so if you have questions, uh, please let them know. Um, for now, um, I would say. Go breathe it out a little bit. Uh, um, your big part is over. The pressure is gone, I hope. Um, and I'm going to um, give Alton the, the stage in a little bit. So Alton, get ready for that. Jason, thank you so much. I know you've been uh, up late working on this. You've been uh, just launching your radio program. It's been amazing yeah. to, to, for you to, to make time uh, to be here today. So uh, thank you very much for that. Well, thank you. Thank you. And it was a great, great, great journey with you. Thank you. Awesome. I'll see you later at the round table. Don't go too far. I won't. I won't. <laughs> so that was Jason. Uh, please feel free uh, um, to uh, um, share your information with us. 
in the meantime i'm asking alton to uh, come on stage alton if you're there please come on stage alton and i go back uh, quite some years when we uh when we did a show together with lady sovani one of our um uh, earlier speakers garrett welcome Buntati. um yeah, um, Alton and I were the speakers there. Um, it, it was a Super Rando documentary concert. Um, you should definitely look up that clip uh, from Super Rando from Lady Sovani. Um, Alton was thrown off a pier there with his wheelchair. And it was an, an amazing to see that. If you uh, take a look at our Facebook page, you will also see a video that I posted from Alton. Um, as he introduces his foundation and in there you can see how his whole team is throwing him off uh, uh, off the stage there so um welcome alton welcome to innovation c and, and i would like to know um did they throw you off just for the clip or did you do something that they threw you off um can you repeat it if they throw me out uh for the clip and what did, did they throw you off just for the clip or did they have a special reason to throw you off because no, you did no, no. something wrong no no no. that was only for the for the clip but it was yeah. only one time i had to do it seven times for the video for the ones that don't know when you go to marie pompoon um there is a little pier over there just just go stand in it and jump off it and then you can imagine maybe in the slightest little bit how it is to be thrown up there in a wheelchair while your legs are not properly working so all done props to you good afternoon how are you feeling I'm I'm good. I'm really good. I'm excited for the presentation. Awesome. Um, Alton and I have uh, um, shared the stage many times, so I'm just going to give him the stage so he can do his presentation. Uh, please introduce yourself and have fun. I'll come back on stage when it's time. And uh, if you're close to your time, I'll share in the uh, comment box. Okay. Please. Good. Okay. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, first of all, I would like to acknowledge uh, Andy and also Luke Weber for their efforts uh, to making this possible. The consistency to bringing people together, making a difference, uh, is something that's really important, and it's also helping a lot of people um, to use the platform. And I feel honored that I can have this platform today uh, with Miguel and also Jason. I feel like I, I uh, have the honor between two big hotels. It's an interesting uh, development as well, but I feel honored to this day to give you a little bit of hope, some thoughts, some ideas, um, my experience, my journey, and how that it could inspire hope for you as well. So I'm gonna start the presentation. Yes, yeah, so this is the picture that Andy was talking about. Um, actually, um, for the first board, this is the first board of my foundation. And we were thinking about how we can get in one image the main elements of the board. And the thing that was more uh, visible was our courage to do things differently. So that is how we got the idea of taking this picture. This, this one was not for the video clip of Superando, but this is, was only for um, having a picture together as a board. Normally, you would get everyone in a gala suit or a business attire standing together. But as a board, we thought that this picture represents the board of the foundation. And since we were talking about hope from this rock, um, I chose this picture because it also gives hope, give, gives you the opportunity to um, see things from a different perspective. And also how our organization um, is an example, example of the chaos theory that I'm gonna explain, explain during my presentation. But again, I'm really thankful for the opportunity and so that uh, I could inspire a little, more, a little more hope for our island. For, okay, but for the Kias theory, the Kias theory started in 1961, and I want to uh, say the phrase that's on the presentation right now. The flapping wings of a butterfly in Brazil can cause a tornado in Texas. It is the flapping wings of a butterfly in Brazil that can cause a tornado in Texas. 
That was originally said by Edward Lawrence, that's an American mathematician and meteorologist. And in that time, he was looking at ways that he could um, predict weather in the future. So in that time, it wasn't easy to see the weather uh, from maybe five days ahead or one week to one month. You can Google uh, the weather for a whole year. But in that time, he was uh, one of the person that was experimenting on how they could predict weather in the future. And he had a system in, a, in, a, in his computer that he was um, filling in data, uh, temperatures, the wind, all those different parameters so that he could um, get a result to see maybe in a couple of hours what would be the result of the weather on the time. So he was repeating that same process and filling in the data, getting a result, filling it again, getting a result. And he was doing that for a, a, a sure 50 times. On the second day that he was doing that experiment, he didn't want to start from the beginning, but he wanted to start at the 20th uh, um, experiment on the 20th, 20th uh, result and filling in the same parameters as the day before. But doing that, he noticed that after a while, all the results came different from the day before. And that is how he started with the analogy that a uh, butterfly in Brazil can cause a tornado in Texas. If the time is right, if the condition is right, if the butterfly is on the exact, exact moment, the precise moment, they could, that butterfly can start a tornado in Texas. And in my case as well, there was also a beginning, something that was on the right path, on the right time, not so, uh, not so great to see in the beginning, but it made a big difference. So I had a spinal cord injury in 2009, and uh, that was uh, of a car accident. I had a heart condition that I wasn't aware of, and I fainted while I was driving. Because of the heart car accident, I spent two years in different hospitals, uh, different surgeries, rehabilitation centers in Curacao and also in Colombia. And, and at that time, my new normal was in a wheelchair to learn to live again, learn to dress, learn to eat, learn to move around and doing that from a wheelchair. And experiencing that was a way that I've discovered what a spinal cord injury was. I wasn't aware that there was something, that there existed something that was called a spinal cord injury. So I've experienced also what are the different difficulties there was on the island for people in a, with a spinal cord injury, but as well a disability in general. And because of those experiences in Curacao and also in Colombia, we started with the idea, me and my family started with the idea um, to start a foundation that we can help others, especially because of our experience in Colombia uh, for the different treatments, the different um, support that people can get so that they can move forward with their lives. So in 2012, we started our foundation to raise awareness and improve the quality of life for people with spinal cord injury and other types of paralysis. And we focused on five activities. In the beginning, the idea was to uh, come with a facility so that when someone finished rehabilitation, they could keep exercising and stay active. But on that journey, really, we realized all the other difficulties there are for people with a disability, disability on the island. So we started uh, as well putting our efforts in accessibility. We've hosted the, Cur the Curacao Inclusion Award, um, promoting, recognizing, giving award to hotels in, and restaurants that are members of the charter community um, to inspire more organization to become accessible. We've also published a document, a manual that companies can see what are all the things that they have to do to become accessible. We've uh, also um, done conference on this topic. The other key activity is transportation. We have two cars that are wheelchair friendly and uh, people can call us to transport them, especially for um, social activities, because in that time when we started in 2012, it was difficult uh, 
for our organization, when we invite people with wheelchairs for like a Saturday afternoon activity, and it was difficult to get transportation at that time. So now someone can call to go to casino, to the church, to visits um, on holidays, New Year's Eve, uh, Christmas, any time of the day, we have different volunteers to help us as chauffeurs so that we can transport people um, despite of um, having a wheelchair. Other thing is conferences. We did different conferences um, speci specifically for doctors, medicals, uh, professionals, so that they could understand the developments, uh, bringing speakers from around the world, uh, uh, Latin America, Europe, uh, the Caribbean, United States, to talk about the different uh, developments related to spinal cord injury and um, so that the topic can stay active. The other thing is fitness. We've done different uh, fitness activity. We've had a, a monthly pump on wheels session uh, and we do an annual uh, fitness event. It's actually a fundraiser, but uh, the last couple of years, we've considered it more than a fit, uh, fundraising because it serves, it serves as a inclusion platform so that different people with different abilities can still um, do fitness because of the different types of fit the fitness activity that there is during the event. And the biggest activity that we're focused on, especially this year, is our exercise facility. Since 2016, we've uh, started with our facility here in Colum. And it's a facility special with special equipment, um, special certified trainers uh, by NeuroX. It's an American company that's focused on a program called activity-based training. And the philosophy, the philosophy about activity-based training is that um, despite of having a paralysis, that the original thought is that there's no more function that can be recovered definitely after so many years in a wheelchair, but through um, external stimulus and repetitive exercise, special, specifically designed exercises, um, people can get better um, if they have the motivation and drive to do it. And we have three trainers on the island right now. Um, only The only three trainers in Caribbean, in the Caribbean, that are certified in this philosophy um, so that they could help people with epilepsies to recover, recover new function despite of having a spinal cord injury, a stroke, or other types of uh, paralysis. And... Um, Last year in October, we've had a project for 12 people to go six months in a activity-based program. And um, with these three trainers, they, were, they came two times a week for two hours and done active, intensive ex exercises so to get better. And last, uh, a couple of months ago, right before uh, the lockdown that we had with COVID, we've uh, had a event in some build to show the developments of each of the people that were part of the project. And right now I have uh, three testimonies from three people that we have um, to share a little of uh, their progress. So the first one is Shari. She had a pediatric paralysis. So since birth, she had a paralysis. Um, when she came in, she's, she still has um, movement in her legs, but they're weak. So every time she was needed to be lifted from her father, by her father, so that she could get in and out of her wheelchair. But with the training, with the exercise, her legs got stronger, um, more function in her legs, so that now she needs less assistance to get in and out of, of her wheelchair. So if her father can hold her on her hands so that she could stand up and move a little around and to sit in her wheelchair. Uh, the other one is a stroke survivor. Um, this is Mr. Wong. Uh, he was one of the person that came, that um, couldn't speak well, had difficulty walking. He was um, uh, sleeping his leg when he was walking, but he was using a roller um, after doing activity-based training, he started to get better uh, movement in his legs. He started getting stronger in his legs so that 
he um, could raise his leg better when he was walking, even with a rollator. But um, because of his developments, he could also start walking short distances without a rollator. Um, during the event, he could show also how he was um, taking steps, uh, higher steps, to see how he could raise his legs that he didn't do before. Even his speech got better. If he, he started talking, you could understand better when he was talking. So that is uh, one of the things that sometimes is really difficult because if someone gets a uh, speech impediment, it's really difficult to get it back. But si uh, despite that, we were focusing on the muscles on the legs, on the body, even, even though he still got improvement in his speech. Um, the other one is Mr. Herbert. He is one uh, that's got a spinal cord injury on the job. He's an airport police and he was shot on the job. So um, when he came, he was coming um, at our center before, um, since he got after rehabilitation and he came in in a wheelchair. Uh, doing the exercises on our different equipments, he started giving, getting movement in one of his legs because the other did already have a little movement. But doing uh, the exercises here, he got movement in the other leg and he started to stand and also um, try to take some steps, but it was difficult for him. He went to Holland for a second opinion. There, the focus that they gave him there was only to stretching one of his legs that was weak, but they didn't really focus on giving him uh, exercises. They were focusing on stretching the leg. And when he came back, he started um, doing, uh, uh, participating in this project. And now he was able to walk uh, with the brace that he came with Holland, but um, when you take the brace off, it was difficult in the beginning, but now, on that day that we had the uh, event, he was able to show how we could start walking without the brace and using only crutches. So those are three of the examples of the developments uh, of people that are coming out of the center. And the last thing to finish off this presentation is, uh, the really core of the chaos theory. So chaos theories, the chaos is, is actually complex systems. And the chaos theory suggests that behavior of complex systems is exquisitely sensitive to conditions. So that small changes at the start can result in even in ever larger changes in the future, in ever larger changes over time. You can be the small change, uh, Curacao can be the small change at the beginning of a ever larger change over time. And um, when we started, we never knew the big impact that we could have in people's lives. We did have a vision, a hope for the future, but it was the small change in the beginning that created this bigger change now. And we've seen, we are seeing that it's gonna be even bigger in the future. So that was my presentation. Um, I'm really grateful again for the opportunity by Andy to share this platform and give a little more, more hope uh, to Curacao to everyone that's uh, part of the webinar. Thank you very much, Arthur. It's uh, it's not by Andy, it's by the Innovation C team uh, um, because yes. uh, uh, there are more people here in the chat that are also part of Innovation C. Uh, uh, Luke, Diana, uh, uh, and uh, our, our newest member, uh, uh, Garrett. Um, but yeah, uh, let's let's focus on you for a bit because okay. what you've done is exceptional. And I want to go back to that one picture. Um, uh, let me uh, see if I can find the slide real quick. Um, because right here um so people can understand how can can you explain to people how you were sounding at this stage what, what you could say how you were communicating with people because the way you're communicating now um, you can actually talk again but then no at, at that moment i didn't have a voice um i couldn't move my arms so how i was communicating at that time was so I had my mom at the hospital. Uh, that was in Colombia. That wasn't because that picture was in Colombia. I think it was uh, three to four weeks after my accident. And she came in with a notebook and she was writing the alphabet on it. And 
um, when after writing the alphabet, she would go with her pencil on each word of the alphabet and look at my face if I blink or move my head a little, and she would write that word, that um, letter down, and start again, and may go into A, B, C, D, E. When he's when she sees a movement or a blink in my eyes, she would write the second letter again. So she would repeat that process. So that at the moment she could get the word to understand what I'm saying. Uh, I think it was two years ago that she found that notebook again. And one of the things that I've uh, said to her that she wrote down was that I don't like uh, one of the uh, the medicals that were there. <laughs> I think we all that have been in the hospital have had that issue that we didn't like one of the nurses or one of the yeah, doctors. No, yeah, yeah. So I, I can make yeah, you, there's always someone that you wouldn't like, but they help with their heart, and you have to go through it. I, I want to fast forward. Uh, uh, two things that, that I, I would like you to, to, to know for the people in the chat is that um, uh, Alton is sitting here, but Alton has an amazing team behind him um, that starts with his, with his mom and dad, uh, uh, which are amazing people, and um, I think all of us could just only wish that we could have such amazing parents. They've been huge supporters of Alton, but um, with them um, and, and your amazing partner, Suena, I can't forget to mention Suena, uh, Suena yes. is a dear, um, but with them to take you from um, this hospital bed to where you are now, I'm going to uh, close your presentation so people can see your face. You're sitting here as the president of the board of Fundation Alton Pass with your own Alton Pass uh, Center in Cologne. Um, you are still in, in a wheelchair, but you are uh, you have accomplished so much. Um, yeah. would, you create, would you create any of that um, for walking? Or um, so would you prefer to be able to walk again or have created what you have created now? That is a very good question. One thing I'm sure if I didn't have my accident, um, I wouldn't be because it's not about only um, creating this because as you know, um, you get more no's than you get yes in on a journey to make something happen. So the people I've um, visited, the people I've talked to, the opportunities that I've been able to experience, it's so much bigger than what I've, I've really achieved because as you know, you have to go through different difficulties to understand. And it's not that we have this facility and clients coming in that's it's perfect. So um, I've noticed that um, I've started to get really cur curious to understand how I can get an idea and turn it to something physical. And I don't think um, if I have to choose walking and being a wheelchair that, for example, Walking can give me, uh, can replace what I've, I've, I have achieved. But that doesn't mean that I'm not going to walk again. Shit, I agree. Um, and, uh, there is a question in the question box. We'll, we'll get to that in the round table. I just want to say uh, during my rehabilitation, lying in my, uh, um, getting out of my wheelchair, I heard about Alton. Alton has been an inspiration for me to do what I'm doing now. So as much as he's thanking me, I want to thank him. Um, because he keeps motivating me every time again. Like uh, we, we keep pushing each other. He's doing this, so I'm doing that. He, I'm doing this, yeah. so he's doing that. So um, uh, Alton, thank you for that. I'm uh, gonna continue with the next presentation. Please take a, play, take some time for yourself and get ready for a round table later because um, uh, there is a very good question there for you waiting. So yeah, talk to you in a bit. Okay, awesome. Bye Alton. So yeah, that was our second speaker. That means we are uh, halfway through. Um, if you have any questions, please write them down. We can ask them in the round table in a little bit, uh, or you can ask them um, right now in the chat. Um, can't get to all the questions right now, but I'll try to get them all in the round table. It's kind of weird for me today being here all by myself, um, not having Luke with me on stage or uh, uh, Renate uh, or Shane. Um, but that's how it goes. It's, it, it's also kind of nice. Um, so I'm going to ask my other friend on stage, uh, uh, Mr. Energy, Miguel uh, Perez-Santillo, 
um, who worked for Corandon. Um, I, I would love to hear uh, what he's gonna present about. Uh, I already know, but I would like to hear his take on um, what we're gonna share. Miguel, please come on stage. Miguel is at the job right now. Um, Miguel has agreed on doing this presentation, even though his hotel just opened two weeks ago and um, he's, uh, he's been working a lot of over hours, but he guaranteed me that he still gets his six hours of sleep every night. Miguel, welcome to the stage. Hi, Andy. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Hi, everyone. I hope everyone is doing well today. Um, I'm uh, gonna give you the stage so you can um, present yourself. Uh, and I think that that will do fine because as a, a communication and PR manager, I can do better than you. So That's not entirely true. It's, I'm not gonna lie. Um, I've worked as a journalist in the past and I've been on television and I'm not gonna lie, this is a different kind of nervous. I'm actually nervous to be quite honest. Like my hands are sweating. Um, I've never done this before. So it's it's quite interesting. And it's it's actually, my, might sound cheesy, but it's an honor to be able to um, be together with people that have been through so much um, in, in different ways, Alton in his own way, but Jason as well. I mean, everyone experiences life differently and turbulations in a different um, um, way. So I just, first of all, I want to congratulate both speakers because honestly, you guys were amazing. So, so yeah. Well, it's now your time to be amazing. I'm going to remove myself up the stage. Okay. Go for it, Miguel. All right. Thank you. Okay. Um, hi, once again, everyone. Um, all right. I'm going to start with. Let me see, share media. So I'm going to upload my presentation. So just give me a minute. There it is. Should be coming up. All right. I think everyone is seeing my presentation now. Um, to me, this whole process was kind of interesting. As Andy had explained earlier on, um, I've, I've been quite busy, but everyone has. So that's not an excuse. So it was just finding the right time to be able to sit down and and, and, and do this. And I wasn't too sure at first um, what to expect or what to say, but, and he said hope. It's all about hope. So I thought, let me start with, with my personal journey. It's uh, no better or worse than anyone's, it's just mine. It's the, the journey of Miguel Gonzalez Perachentil. I thought to just remove the Gonzalez from my presentation because my name is, is very um, long. Okay, let me see. Everyone should be seeing everything. Um, if you have any questions, please uh, go ahead, or if you want to say anything, I'll try to answer it. Um, so this the first thing that I wanted to do is just show an impression of um, where I'm currently working. As, as you all can see, there's different pictures on the left-hand side of my presentation um, so that everyone can get a, a total imagery of, of what it's looking like. Um, I don't know if anyone has seen our Facebook page as well or has been following the whole process because the whole process was a long one. Um, I personally started working here in October, and to to be able to see this whole thing um, turn out to be what it is when I came in in October, the main building, uh, the big building that you see in the picture on the left hand side, that main building was pretty much rubble, uh, dust, and, and concrete. And um, seven months, let me see, nine months later, we're open. It's just amazing. Uh, I sometimes I still cannot believe that we were able to accomplish all of this. So as, as from Curious Law, I'm extremely proud to be part of this project. But okay, I'm gonna start with the first slide and I'm gonna guide myself through my presentation based on my slides. Um, all right, so my journey. I wanted to make it a little bit personal. Um, I was born in Caracas, Venezuela in 1981. My grandparents are both from Curious Law. And in 86, when my mom noticed that the, the Bolivar, um, the currency of Venezuela was devaluating, um, drastically when Carlos Andres Pérez, uh, president, came into power, my mom decided, okay, as a single mother, um, I have to find hope for my kid, for myself. So what was the best option at the time for my mother? To move to Curacao. Because Curacao was obviously um, economically, financially, and socially stable, um, or better off in comparison to Venezuela. To Caracas. So we moved in 86, mom and I, well, mom mostly, packed her bags, um, and then we jumped in my mom's Jeep Wrangler at the time, brown, um, I don't know if we call it a two cabin, but anyways, a long Jeep, 
big enough. We packed everything and we drove from Caracas all the way to Porto. And then we embarked on our journey to Curacao by ferry. So we came to Curacao and I've lived here most of my life um, up until 1994, um, where I attended a military camp. Not for the wrong reasons, like a lot of people ask. Uh, automatically people go, hey, you went to military academy, why? Because you were naughty? No, actually, I was just very attached. Once again, um, living with a single mother, um, you automatically you're attached to that person um, and, and you depend on, on her um, all the time. So my mom having my best interest in mind, he said, okay, you need, you, need, you need to be able to be attached yourself. And, and that's why I attended a military academy and I had a, an amazing um, up and down experience you know, being removed from what you know, Curacao was home for me for so many years and then going into complete new environments with drastic changes. Um, but at the same time, that's, that's what helped to create part of my journey um, to become the person that I became, I think. I'm still learning on a daily basis. But that was a, a huge confrontational moment um, having to be completely detached from your mother when you're 14 and trying to make it on your own uh, on your own and that's where you're constantly hoping uh, <laughs> for for a better um, future and progression would be so that was up to 94 and then in, in, in 2001 once I finished school quite interesting I moved back to Curacao. it was a it was a difficult time at the, at, at the moment where um, my, my mother had lost her job, so, um, all right, let's find work. Let's find hope. And I started at the age of 19, I think, for that summer. I started working back then. It was a company called Yachty New Horizon. And I started basically um, loading, unloading containers. So making way above minimum wage, but you had to bring something home. And you did it with a, with a smile, and you just went for it. And... Um, so I did that for the summer, then I was able to move to Holland in 2001. And um, that's when I started uh, studying and, and working and living in the Netherlands. So that was up to 2013. The Long and Winding Road. I don't know if you've noticed, but I uh, my slides, my titles, I used songs. Um, mostly songs from uh, artists that have influenced me um, to be the person that I am. Um, I'm extremely creative. I think I am. Um, I started writing poetry also when I was uh, 15. That was my mechanism of dealing with my issues. I mean, we all have them. But th that was my way of, of dealing with the problems that I had at the time. Um, being with a single mother, confronting yourself with the fact that, you know, there's no father figure in your life and why. So music was really healing. And the Beatles uh, were my main source of inspiration. And they helped me to start writing. And it was um, a, a medicinal treatment for me as a person. So that's why I decided to call this the long winding road um, because it was a long winding road. Um, I worked in, in the Netherlands for years as a promoter. Um, I don't know if anyone has been to Let's Plan, but if you have, we used to do this awesome comedy club called Boom Chicago. And what I basically did is I promoted on the side of the street, try to convince customers, clients to come into the show. Um, so you'd have to use all tricks available to you to convince them why you would go to a comedy club instead of exploring Amsterdam. So it was really hard, but that's when I started developing my, my, my skills, um, talking to people, communicating. That's when I learned, hey, I'm a natural communicator. Um, not the easiest of times when you're trying to sell um, a package of, I think it was 85 years at a time. In, in, in minus 10 degrees or minus five degrees and you're freezing, but you just keep on going because you're, you're looking for that, that better future. The better future is you keep on going, you never stop. So those, those moments really, made, I remember clearly, and I just have a good memory. I remember clearly one night, standing with this other girl, she came from uh, Maryland. If I'm not mistaken, she was from Maryland. She was working and studying at the time um, as an exchange student. And we were standing outside. It was December, it was blistering cold. And my friend just went to this restaurant, I forgot the name of the restaurant, but they made the best ribs. And I'm standing in the middle of cold, he just gave me a slab of ribs and I'm just eating really quickly to keep on working. And I'm just thinking to myself and I tell her, life doesn't get much better than this. I mean, how awesome is this that I can have the best ribs 
um, in Amsterdam, in the coolest city besides New York. Um, I've never been, but that's what I hear. And, and life is great. And that made you realize that um, things can always be much worse than they actually are. Um, so yeah, just, just remember that really quickly. Um, I also worked as a retention representative um, for UPC, uh, UPC now at Zero. Um, that's where I really developed also patience, which I never really had much of. But dealing with customers that are constantly um, nagging, or not nagging, but they're not content and you need to convince them to stay with you, uh, that, that did something to me professionally. Um, all right, next slide. Um, the long and winding road continues. I moved to Curious in 2013. And um, I've been writing for ages, as I said, doing poetry mostly, short stories. And then I started working with the 360, which after a few months, four months, went bankrupt, out of a job, living with my mom, it's not the best of times, but you keep on going. There is no, there's no other option, you just need to keep on going. Um, eventually I started working also at CBA television here, which also closed its doors recently. And I also work at Kelly Kirishaw as a news reporter. I noticed that my passion has always been telling stories. One way or another, storytelling, maybe through television, maybe through writing, um, maybe through social media, I love to tell stories. Um, so yeah, and now I'm a public relations and communications um, a manager for the Beach Resort. I started here in, um, in October of 2019 in, after I had, a, you could say, an awesome year at Telekinesal. I did this awesome uh, news reporting also during the North Sea Jazz Festival in Spanish for a various amount of channels. And it was very bittersweet because I just received a deal. They approached me, they heard about me, and uh, they, they gave me a call and said, hey, we want to sit down and talk to you. And I'm like, okay, about what? And about a job opportunity. All right, but I'm, I'm good where I am. And they said, no, 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 let's talk. And then I came over and I sat down with the owner and we talked and I received an offer and I said, wow, um, this is a uh, heck of an opportunity. This is moving towards the future. And this gave me hope. I just became a father, an official father at the time. And we have a small home and, and, and you want to keep on growing, thinking about your children and your family. So this gave me hope for a better future person. And then it was just, although I loved what I did, with love and passion, this was a stepping stone. So I, I, me and my family took the decision and then we started working here um, in October and I've grown with the company from October up to now. Um, again, from being, not I don't want to say a pilot bird, but from being concrete and just construction into a house of dreams. Why do I say house of dreams? Because believe it or not, this project, especially during COVID, has given hope to so many people to be able to come to work every day and, and literally put bread on the table. Uh, not only to me personally, but to everyone working here. So it's it's quite amazing to be part of this, this project. Next slide, the show must go on, reference to um, the impact of COVID-19. What it, what it means, me personally, me as a person, as we will, what it made me realize is that you need to be resilient. Um, it united not only my family, but my family at work. It united every single one of us. We became more aware that everyone experienced COVID or whatever struggles they may have in life differently. And given a, a shoulder to cry on, not literally, but you know, being supportive to your colleagues goes a long way. And you receive it back, uh, believe it or not. When you're struggling, that's when you notice actually how big of a heart our community has, our locals, the huge heart. We have our, our less positive aspects, but when we struggle, that's when we unite, and that's what COVID did. Um, I've seen it all over here, so, but also at work. Every single person in every department is willing to go the extra mile. We've been working without exaggeration, um, 50, 60 hour weeks on our own because we want to, because we want this um, to work. Uh, we want this project to be successful, not only for us, but for the community. And, and loyalty. Um, 
COVID-19 showed just how loyal every single person working in this project is and how much they love and believe in this um, little project. And um, another reference to a great band, which um, I fell in love in the 90s, Two Fighters, The Best of Me, um, my family, and, um, my girlfriend, Francesca, my oldest, Abby, and my youngest, Sky. Sky, why did we choose Sky? Really funny story, I had the funniest names on my list. Um, and we just said, all right, we're gonna make two lists. You make a list, I make a list. And from those names, we're gonna decide, we're gonna choose. And funny enough, the only name that that was the same was Sky. And I remember telling my girlfriend, she's gonna be the limit. She's gonna be, um, no joke, she's gonna be the, the, ray, the ray of sunlight that we need in her life. And that's why she's gonna be called Sky. And there she is. And she is, she has her temper, but she is that little tornado that we need in a daily basis. So they keep me grounded, they keep me fighting, and um, they make me realize just how lucky I am to be part of my community, my home, and my company. And um, pretty much that's it. I um, well, that, That's the end. I just want to turn it with a beautiful picture of our pool. Um, if there are any more questions related and specific about about work, uh, just let me know, but I just wanted to make it a little bit more personal. Awesome, Miguel, good job. Uh, um, I, I have a lot of questions about work, but also about your beautiful family. Um, I, I love when I see someone that's uh, so passionate about his work um, to also throw in a picture of the family. Um, is this something that, that you grew up with or is this really a choice of yourself? Like whatever I'm doing, my family is uh, the most important thing to me. Family has always been number one. I think the fact that I grew up alone with my mom and later on my sister when I was older, um, the, my great grandmother actually instilled this uh, this feeling of unity in my grandmother, and she passed it on to my mother. Where family is everything, and that's why I'm all, I'm always proud to to family comes first. W without family, um, the pillars in my life or in anyone's life, I believe. Um, you're alone and battling alone in this world is, is is not is not ideal so why not do it together and that's why family is everything I, I would like to know how did you experience military academy being so far away from your family because when i hear you talk about it it really shaped you indeed yeah. um, but i do think uh, hearing you talk about your family like that it, it has it, it must have created a huge shift um hard heartbreaking i would call my mom my first three weeks i was not allowed to call my mother um <laughs> so i pretty much cried my eyes out my first few days and then um with time like anything else you get used to it you get used to it you find your pattern you find your structure and then you realize okay this is what it is right now and you move on from it because if not you're stuck um in 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 this feeling of angst, which won't, will not help you with anything. So at a certain point you realize, all right, can I do something about this issue right now? No, if I can't, you shelf it for now and you keep on going. And that's very much applicable to now. I remember when, when we first heard um, that the borders would be reopening and then the tourists would be coming. The first thing that happens is, okay, working in the industry, which is completely new to me, but beautiful at the same time. It's such a challenge. When we heard our, okay, they're gonna open the borders, they're coming over, um, fear. Okay, how are we gonna deal with it? What, what happens if you get infected? But then I said, Miguel, there's two things you can do. You can keep walking in fear or you can just park it. You know the reality, all you can do is be safe, which we are, we take it very seriously. I wash my hands constantly, that's why they're so dry. Um, so, and, and that's how you solve that issue. Because you, you need to keep on going anyways. So you can either cry over it and stress, or you can breathe, park it, realize what you need to do, and move on. So that's what military school did for me. A uh, very important lesson. Uh, 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 just today, I wrote a, a post on my Instagram, also on my Facebook page, uh, uh, um, about fear, and you just have to embrace it because you can't escape it. Uh, the only thing you can do is embrace it, embrace it and take it with you. 
Uh, I'm going to close your presentation, and so we're going to stay on stage. But I'm going to ask Jason and Alton to come on stage as well. Jason and Alton, please come on stage so we can start a roundtable. And um, we have the three presentations today. It's it's a little bit different. Again, we keep switching with Innovation C. Um, we're going to keep switching for the future as well. The In the coming two weeks, there will be no Innovation C digital conference because we're going to take a little break. We're going to go on a vacation. This was our ninth, and we're not going to do the tenth because I need a vacation. Um, it's been challenging every time uh, to get the speakers on stage, uh, uh, getting them ready for the presentations. It's always been uh, um, knowing who you're going to ask for this one, who you're going to ask for that one, and it's it's scavenging through my rollo decks and and looking through uh, linkedin and facebook and then luke would come with someone or diana would come with someone it, it's always been uh, a, a challenge um, and it's time for us to to, to switch things up we're going to take a, a break for a couple of weeks and then we're going to come back with a new um, innovation c digital conference um, and we're going to come more powerful in the future we'll be also creating workshops um, and more personal guidance as well uh, to our participants. In the meanwhile, um, uh, if you want to join us, you can find us on Facebook and, uh, and on LinkedIn under Innovation Cure. Um, but let's continue with the roundtable. Uh, Jason, uh, Alton, and Miguel, now that the, 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 the tension has um, subsided a little bit, uh, the build up to these talks is always more than people can see. Um, how has that been for you, Jason? How are you feeling now compared to when we just started? Well, you know, my 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 first um, oh, my, my biggest worry was doing a presentation in English. I mean, I've never done that this long before, <laughs> so um, that was my, my my biggest worry. But you know, um, once I started, I was like, it is what it is, man. So let let's do this and. If, it's, if it goes well, it goes well. If it doesn't go well, yeah, then it doesn't. It, then it didn't go well. So, but I think I did quite good. <laughs> I, I think you did decent. I mean, uh, I, I didn't receive any complaints. In the meanwhile, I'm typing so people can connect with you. Uh, Alton, how was it for you? I'm um, good. I uh, I wasn't really nervous, but more curious on um, the chaos theory because it's a really complex theory. If you Google it, you can see like the terms and different explanations about it. They even have a simple meaning of the Kias theory. So for me, it was interesting to explain it and that it can um, come in a way more easy to understand. But um, we'll see. I saw, I noticed that there's a, uh, there was a couple of comments, uh, but I think I did my best. Well, we're going to get back to the comments in a bit. Um, Miguel, how was it for you? I mean, as you said in the beginning, you were a little bit nervous, but you did very well. So, how does it? How is it feeling now that, that now that the pressure is off? Um, it was a little bit intimidating, to be quite honest, because um, I come from a completely different background, I, I believe, compared to Jason and Alton. And um, I mean, what Alton's been, it's been through. I mean, I, I remember. Maybe Alton doesn't remember. I remember yeah. meeting Alton for the first time back in two thousand. 14 when I was working for Noticia 360. That, yeah, I do remember. that was one of my first, first items. And I spent about seven hours editing because I couldn't edit back then. And um, so it was, it was, and, and throughout the years, I've actually interviewed Alton more times and I've been in contact with Alton. Um, Jason, I also know um, actually through common friends of ours. That's how I met him first time. Yeah. Exactly. And, uh, yeah. If I'm if I'm not mistaken, uh, it was either during Easter. My connection or, is very poor here. I don't know um, what's happening. Just, I just, just heard Jason, but I, 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 I couldn't hear anymore. What did you say? I said that I remember meeting Jason at a friend's house, um, at Ralph's house back in the day. I think 2015. I, I think it was a Wednesday or a Thursday. It was a day off, and I met you. And yeah. very interesting conversations that I've had with you as well. So when I heard from Andy that I would be presenting together with Jason and Alton, it was a, at the same time a little bit intimidating. But I think I think it went well. It was it was from the heart. Um, what what I what what I explained. So yeah. Awesome. Um, before I'm gonna well, go. In before I go into the questions um, from uh, uh, from Nancy and, and Rihanna, um, 
I would like to, uh, Jason, your connection is, is, is a little bit better. There's some noise in the background. So I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna mute you a little bit uh, um, and let you talk when it's up. No, it's not you, someone else has two screens open or just so you know. Um, but yeah, anyway, um, I forgot the question. Let, let's continue with, with, uh, um, uh, with Nancy. Uh, Miguel, my cousin daughter has the same beautiful name, Sky. She's a performer, singer, and musical star. If you're looking for expanding the performance family of Corendon, let me know. So uh, you, you can become a manager, an art manager as well now. See, innovation see, helps with everything. Um, and to Alton, uh, Diana asks, um, Alton, how can people support your foundation? Alton, how can people support your foundation? Well, first of all, um, we have a WhatsApp number that they can talk, um, contact us anytime for everything, anything. Uh, the number is uh, 510-007-0087. So 510-0087. Um, but and any anyone can um, help either with making a donation, um, uh, expertise, a volunteer. Uh, there's always a um, way to help. But we're looking for two people this month that can help us uh, make, by making a, uh, a donation, ten guilders a month for the rest of the year. So from this, from July till December, ten guilders a month. Uh, that would be really appreciated. Okay, um, let's uh, let's continue with uh, the next one. Uh, Errol, uh, Jason, I'm a designer that has a few handbags that I designed myself. Will be a shop so I can showcase my products there. It would be nice to provide some nice local products to the tourists. I'm going to answer this uh, a little bit, um, Errol. Um, uh, Jason goes over the development of the area. Uh, the other ones are uh, um, hotels that are going to be there and in the hotels are gonna be shops. So uh, Jason is not the right person to ask, unless you wanna ask uh, to build your own hotel there, then maybe you can guide you to the right people. Um, but you need to go to the souvenir stores um, themselves and that are in Riftford, that are gonna be in, uh, um, uh, in uh, Renaissance, uh, Marriott and at Corendon. And Corendon, it's the Brit. Um, am I saying that correctly, Miguel? Correct. Yeah. So the hotels don't... Uh, Yes, go ahead, Jason. No, I said exactly. You said it right. So um, I can I cannot answer that. So um, I think probably you should go to the Riffard area or Corandon. I don't know. Yeah. So I got some other uh, um, questions in, in, in the meanwhile through chat, through Instagram. Um, and one question, of course, uh, especially now that East has closed and we uh, um, COVID happened, so many job losses. Um, someone asked how many jobs are being created uh, do you miguel or, or you jason know between all the hotels uh, uh, the development of the area um, uh, uh, like everything do you know how many jobs there are being created well you maybe go first, miguel can <laughs> you, you go you go you go <laughs> um, I can see through be, before before COVID, like at a certain point when we were constructing, we had um, between 250 to 300 people working on construction. Uh, that was that was before COVID, of course. Um, so afterwards, it was a, it's a bit less. Right now that we're operational, we're working um, approximately between 100 to 120, 25 people currently. Um, so that will be growing. Um, because right now we are operational with um, 100 plus rooms. Um, so it was always the plan, even before COVID, it was always the plan to open in phases. So um, as we open the rest of the hotel, obviously we'll need more personnel. So and we'll keep on growing. Um, I would just for the people that are interested, I shared this yesterday on our Innovation C Facebook page, um, how Corendon has uh, um, search for the, the right talents um, for, for their hotel. And I'm, I'm using the word talent because they didn't just go look for personnel. They really went to look for talent. And when I got a tour at the Crandon, uh, the way I heard uh, uh, Miguel talk about how they 
were looking for 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 uh, um, employees there. It was so inspiring to hear that it weren't just looking for the next cleaning lady, but someone that that really wanted to be part of the Corandon family. So I can only hope that the other hotels will learn that is, from. That is true. I don't know if if you want me um, to elaborate on that, but indeed we. We did have a process that wasn't really known in Curacao yet. I mean, in Holland, they've been doing it for a while, um, but it's we were looking for personality indeed. Um, we were looking for personality, and that's why we decided to hold a, a recruitment, what what we called the casting days or the pre-casting days, which was an event um, at around the time of Fumba, I remember, where people had to pre-register and then they would come to um, University of Curacao and there we had um, one, two, three, or four classrooms. And then what happened, you would be pre-registered, you would arrive, you would say more or less in which direction you would like to work. And then we would divide people in classes. And then automatically when you would go into the room and you would sit, you would be split up, you would be confronted immediately um, with, with questions and cases. And why, why did we want to do this? To see how you react. So we weren't, we weren't, um, judging anyone based on their CV. Like we didn't ask for CV at that point yet. Um, all we wanted to do is see how you react. Um, do you say hello? Do you say goodbye? Do you say good morning? Do you look at someone in their eyes? What is your posture like? So that's what we wanted to base it on. And then out of that event, we invited the next week a percentage. <laughs> Why are you smiling so much there, Jason? <laughs> <laughs> no, he, he just put a posture. Right? Anyway. We, we, we all immediately corrected our posture. I mean, <laughs> so, so what happened is the week after we invited a percentage of those people, we invited them back um, to a different location because by changing location, you're also changing perspective. You're changing the way you're going to react. Um, and then we had workshops. So it was a smaller group. And then we had four type of workshops. And then each workshop was designed, it sounds very fancy, but each workshop was designed to try um, to tap into different emotions of each person. Like you had the, the hero workshop where you would sit in a calm, quiet environment and you would tap into your personal life and talk about your struggles. And then you would see how people would react. We had people crying. Um, they would refer to it was called my hero because everyone would say someone that inspired them. And it often, and that's another topic for another time, but it shows you how a lot of us were um, raised by other single parents or grandmothers or uncles and the effect that someone can have in your life. So we wanted to see the human side of each person because in hospitality, dealing with people on a daily basis, you need to be human. You need to be able to smile. You need to be able to deal with emotion. You need to know when to speak. You need to know when to be quiet. And then so that workshop, along with all the other workshops, were able to give us a better picture of, all right, you, you do belong to us, to our family. Um, the other workshops, for instance, one was where we had people go on stage and you had a few minutes to come up with a rap. You had to rap about Corandon. So that would break the ice though. That immediately broke the ice. Then we had this other workshop where we wanted to see how you would react under, under frustrating um, 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 situations. We would give out, um, um, what was it again? Balloons, blow balloons. You had a bunch of balloons with colors and you had to start building a pyramid with different colors. So everyone would start blowing and building the pyramid. And then all of a sudden we would say, stop. We forgot to tell you something. And then you see everyone go. And they're like, yes, you're only allowed to use one color. And then based on that reaction, we would see how people reacted. Some people would be like, I'm done with it. I'm quitting. I'm not doing it. Well, then you automatically know. Um, the other would be like, all right, let's, let's, let's do it. Let's pop the balloons. Or, and, and based on each workshop, you were able to say, all right, this person would work um, within our team or not. And then the third, um, the third conversation, the third, the third step, sorry, would be sitting down with each individual and then we would pull out the CV. But then you already had a complete different perspective about this person because you experienced this person under different circumstances. So 
and, and that person is also more comfortable talking about his, his or her that, that, it's a whole different approach um yeah. uh, jason how many visitors um, with the two cruise ship terminals and the three mm -hmm. hotels um, uh, can Curacao receive in just that area? Well, I, I don't have the exact numbers, of, of course, but you know, um, if we take that, I don't know, Miguel, how many ships, cruise ships come a day here? Like twice. Right now, right now, excuse me, right now it's difficult to say because it used to be weekly, uh, what, three, four times a week, but three, now. Think, yeah. Now after COVID, they're just parked there. So no, no, exactly. let, let, let's say for uh, one day, just one day, if there are two cruise ships and mm -hmm. the three hotels, um, how many people um, will be on the island at the same time, more or less? So um, how many people are in, uh, can be in your hotel at the end? Uh, um, the like 400 right now? Uh, right now, occupancy right now? Um, yes, um, around 400, correct. Right. Yeah, four hundred. Uh, let, let's say each ship, each cruise ship can carry a minimum of a thousand, a thousand, fifteen hundred. Then you have three thousand, three thousand people with the four hundred of the Corandon Hotel, with the two fifty of uh, um, uh, Courtyard Marriott. Well, then let's say five thousand um, with uh, the guest of Re Renaissance Hotel. So. Let's say around five thousand uh, uh, five thousand tourists here in Curacao. Those are the, those are a lot of jobs. That, that's that's yeah, what I mean. Those are a lot of exactly. jobs. Exactly. So that's uh, why I, keep, I kept saying that, that. That's why I kept saying that it means uh, more employment opportunities because it's not only um, the hotels, but it's only it's also uh, the visitor center. It's also um, the people who have to, has to do clean the water, the people that has to uh, uh, manage the the, the, the the canal rides. So you know there are a lot of job uh, job opportunities around the area. The people that need to work in the souvenir stores and the people that can sell the souvenirs in the souvenir stores. It's like it's, it's, an, it's an ongoing process. So just exactly. Just, exactly. And, and that's why, why I, I hope to have this a little bit also to, to share the, the, the part fit with Miguel more more of the uh, hospitality, uh, uh, you more with the development over there, and Alton um, with his part of, of um, more the medical side of it. And I'm coming now to you, Alton. I muted you for a little bit because there was a little bit noise in the background. Um, I'm going to unmute you in a little bit, or you can do it yourself. Um, you mentioned the inclusive award. Um, what can Corandon do to get that uh, an inclusive award and and the other hotels, of course, there in the neighborhood? Because we want as many inclusive awards or as many hotels. Um, so please. Yeah. So um, the uh, event that we had it was in 2017. Um, it was the first time. Uh, for the first one, we limited um, the participating company only to hotels and restaurants that are a, a, a member of chapa but the idea is the vision that we have is that we're going to have a platform that a company can uh, register to be audited by a uh, specific group that can see if they qualify for um uh, uh like, a, like a sign not, the, not only the award, like a sign, and they can be the sign that they are accessible and how accessible they are. Because um, disability is really broad. You can have accessibility, accessibility for people in wheelchairs with impaired vision, impaired hearing. So we're gonna make categories so that someone can know if here you can get in the entrance, but maybe there's not yet a bathroom, or maybe there are bedrooms, but not rolling showers. So there are going to be different categories to really specify um, how accessible each building is. And the next phase would be that between all of the buildings that are that are qualified, that are accessible and how accessible they are, between those categories, they're going to be award for those companies. Okay. Well, uh, ju just a tip, Miguel, for in case you don't have it yet, there is this wheelchair that's got big tires and it's made of plastic, especially to go to the beach. That thing is fun. Um, I have a friend, you, you've met her as well. Um, what's her name again? Um, the, the Korean lady that talked at the Korean Spinal Cord Injury Congress. Uh, 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 yes, yeah. Sunmi Venema. Sunmi Venema, uh, um, she came to Curacao, uh, um, was one of the speakers at the 
uh, uh, Alden passes uh, um, Caribbean Spinal Cord Injury Congress and she went uh, into the sea with that thing and she had such a blast and this is a lady that's got a, a specific disease that can't swim by herself so it's uh, it was a big deal to her. I'm um, talking about that uh, the Caribbean Spinal Cord Injury Congress um, this year you were supposed to have one this year yes my guess is that's going to be a little bit difficult unless we're going to do it at Corandon. <laughs> no, it was uh, postponed because uh the congress is is we starting to get really international so definitely for people coming from abroad they, they have to plan so we were planning it we already had different speakers confirmed uh venues different things going on but um we weren't sure how the situation would be on the date of the event. So uh, we've postponed it as well. But one thing that we're still working on is a Caribbean Spinal Cord Injury Network. So it's a network for the Caribbean. We already have um, professionals from diff six different islands in the Caribbean that is interested in uh, for, uh, being part of this network. We've, uh, we have contacts with two international organizations that are willing to support um, the network. So it's going to be something that uh, before the end of the, this year is going to be more formal. But the Congress, um, the idea is to hold it next year. Okay. The, the, you do remember who was supposed to be your presenter this year, right? To be what? I didn't get the part. You, you do remember who was supposed to be one of your presenters this year, right? Hey, I, I, have, I have a little bit of history. Um, the uh, um, the second Caribbean Spinal Cord Injury Congress, I was invited and I came over in my um, worker pants and, and a t-shirt um, while the governor was over there. Everyone was in Pachi, nicely dressed up. And um, I just got my car, I just got my driver's license again. And I felt so out of place, uh, but yeah, uh, uh, Alton invited me as a, as a guest. So I was very, uh, um, not only very supportive, but also very proud of being there as a spinal cord injury. Uh, uh, um, yeah, what is it, survivor fighter myself? Um, and I'm standing there and I'm like, hold on, I, I need to pick up my game. So um, as soon as the spinal cord injury uh, congress was over, I went out to buy a suit, uh, buy uh, uh, um, uh, shirts and pants and nice shoes and everything. like. In two years, when there's, when there's the next one, I'm going to be ready. And indeed, um, I was requested to come on stage and talk um, as a speaker uh, um, in front of all my old nurses and old doctors and physical therapists and manual therapists. It was it was a blast. And what I didn't know um, and what Alton didn't know was it was also kind of like a a, a, a job a, a job interview because um, the. Uh, uh, um, the SGR group, the, our national uh, rehabilitation center, the um, uh, supervisory board uh, um, <clears throat> director was sitting in there and was taking notes um, if I could become a member of the supervisory board. So that, that, it was a very special, um, uh, uh, special experience. Um, another question for Alton. Um, wheelies are those for tourists as well um, and i think this is uh, also very good related for jason to know this because he can uh, um, give this to the other hotels and for um uh, for miguel to, to also know that you have the wheelie and what the wheelie does exactly um, are the wheelies also available to tourists or only to uh, to our local community okay so at the moment we're more focusedly on local um so we're not actually a taxi but sometimes if there's availability, we do see a, a opportunity or we refer um, the people to other um, accessible transportation that they can use. Okay. But uh, it's on the same number. They can uh, ask any questions on a number regarding Willie really as well, and uh, we could answer them. Yeah, no, the, the number is in the, in the uh, chat, um, 5100087. Bon, uh, uh, do you guys have any questions to each other? I mean, I'm asking all the questions over here, but do you have any questions, remarks, complaints? Complaints? No, no. But we don't, definitely not complaints. But it was a real pleasure. It was a real pleasure for uh, to join the stage, uh, to, to share the stage with uh, Miguel and uh, Aldon and uh, with you, Andy. Thank you so much for this uh, opportunity. And I'm looking forward for the next one. Awesome. Uh, I, I do have a question though. So 
um, there's still a little um, worry or questions about um, the future of our economy, uh, how we're gonna have tourists on the island. How do you guys see um, December in Curacao? December? In what you're doing. December in Curacao? Yes. Well, for now, it's very, very difficult, but you know, like the the title of this, uh, the theme of this this uh, presentation today is Hope from a Rock. So uh, just keep the hope that things will solve and that we will um, overcome this and then that we will survive. So that's the only thing I can say for now. Okay. But planning-wise, you it, it, it would be difficult to plan like four months ahead. It so it's like it day is. by day, you guys evaluate what's going on to see the next steps that you can take. Exactly, exactly. We have to just uh, uh, keep meeting and just keep um, uh, 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 evaluating which project, which not. So uh, the, the discussion was if we have to continue with all the six uh, public projects of, of the, this, this program, because, you know, it, 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 it it is twenty-five million dollars of uh, uh, guilders um, for for the whole project, for all the six uh, uh, um, uh, public projects. So you know, it's it's a lot of money, and we don't have that kind of money right now. So we have to evaluate, uh, prioritize which project or which not. So um, that's what it, we were in that phase right now. So uh, right. we we just have to wait and see how this will go. I would say, in, in the, if I'm not mistaken, if I know the numbers correctly, there are 3,000 people that have come to the island in the, in the last couple of weeks, um, and there are 10,000 coming in the next month. Um, uh, so uh, seeing that we have no cases uh, whatsoever so far with these 3,000, we're doing very well. So that's looking very hopeful. Um, there has been one case, but that's on the, on the um, forward operating uh, two cases. Uh, well, well, one was on the full base, um, so um, I, that's immediately in quarantine. Uh, I haven't heard about the second case, but it came, I, out, I think it came out of you. Sorry, it came out this afternoon. I, I saw it pop up that there's a second case now. They're not saying if it's fall related, but um, yeah, I see here. Activo dos. Okay. okay. Oh. Okay. Well, I, I would say for, for 3,000 people, that's still very, very positive. Um, and let's see how the coming 10,000 are coming before we're going to talk about December. Don't be too hopeful, Alton. Um, but, but let's stay very hopeful. Um, and, yeah. and Miguel, how, how is it with you as a, as a close resort uh, um, and, and um, having a quarantine there um, if something would happen? Um, I, my guess is you have a lot of uh, rules in, in play. Um, we, we haven't experienced it yet, so it's, I mean, you have everything, um, you have everything ready uh, for, for if it would happen, but it's, it's very different. It's, it's hard to say because you don't know how you will react um, until something really happens. So in theory, everything works out, but uh, it, it, knock on wood, nothing has happened yet. I mean, we have hand uh, sanitizers all over the place. We have signs all over the place. Uh, we're open air, so that's a plus for us that everything's open air. There's a lot of wind. There's a lot of sun. Um, so we're, we're we're battling it out as much as we can. And then once again, proof. My hands. I don't know if you can see. They're peeling away um, because of how much hand sanitizer I'm constantly using. I'm I'm gonna do a, a shameless plug for my uh, for my girlfriend right here. This is a <laughs> this is her Bology hand sanitizer. <laughs> it's got aloe vera in it, and it's not just yeah, hand sanitizer. The one, the one that we're using is with aloe vera. Yes, but um, there, the, the thing is there is a preservative in there, and that's not in this one. And that oh. makes the difference. Uh, you can get this one at, at Hofi Cascara. And the best thing yet of it, uh, even better than the hand sanitizer and better that it's protecting your hands, the smell that comes out of it is instant aromatherapy. Uh, um, I was oh. at an event yesterday and I, uh, some lady sneezed in her hand and I was like, oh, here, here, have some for your hand. And she put it on her hand and she smelled like, Oh, can I have some more? I'm like, yeah, please do, here. <laughs> <laughs> it, 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 it works awesome. 
Yeah. Well, I think uh, I think we should uh, uh, round it up for t for today. Uh, and yeah. any uh, last famous words, Miguel, um, because uh, you're probably very busy on that side. Any last famous words? No, today I cleared my agenda just for this, so it's all good. <laughs> wow, I feel honored. Um, Jason, any last words from you? Well, thank you very much again. Thank you. And like I said, it was a pleasure for me to share stage with you guys. Alton, any last uh, words from you? Yeah, just one thing. There was a, uh, someone uh, um, that asked about um, if my goal is to walk again and what is needed to achieve that. So okay. walking is one of the goals. Having a spinal cord injury doesn't only affect uh, the ability to walk, but more so even my hands. I I don't have all of the... I can use my hands, but I, I can't really grip everything. So there are more goals. And for the uh, question that what is needed for that. Um, what we're doing with activity bases here in our facility is one of the ways um, that uh, you can regain new functions despite, because it's not about, um, because spinal cord injury is a damage at, at, the spinal cord injury, at the spinal cord. So it's a way to um, let the signals that goes through the spinal cord getting a new pathway two specific muscles and other parts of the body. So that is one of the ways. Till now, there's not really a cure or something specifically that anyone can do to immediately start walking. Uh, there's different things that are being trying tested. But one of the things that we really believe, me myself, because we've noticed uh, different um, testimonies, different experience with it, and even myself with my injury, I'm supposed to be more dependent on wheelchairs, other type of that equipments and different things, but I'm really independent on myself. So um, there's still more um, developments going on. My posture is getting better. Um, lately I've noticed more back muscles are um, getting stronger that I could sit straighter. And that's also important to walk. It's not about the legs, but I have to be able to hold myself up so I can take steps. So it's a long process and it's a great journey to experience that because it's kind of a, kind of like um, learning to understand your body again. I would like to invite everyone to take a look at uh, Fundation Alton Pass, his uh, um, Facebook page. There are a lot of inspiring stories over there. Um, you can actually see Alton climb the stairs uh, at Cologne uh, um, together with his, uh, with his two uh, um, um, fitness trainers or um, I, I'm not sure if I should call them fitness trains because I know how cruel they can be pushing you to, to your limits. Um, but they're very lovely people. Um, so uh, go check out uh, um, Fundation Alton Pass on Facebook. Yes. Um, and uh, I, I, I know um, the, the part where, where Alton went to, when I had my accident, uh, my fingers were also like this and I couldn't move them. I couldn't hold a spoon myself. I'm lucky now that I can hold a pen again. Um, my manual therapist, really did an amazing job and i'm also still looking uh, um, at surgery um, uh, tomorrow i need to visit uh, just across the street from miguel at the cmc to talk to our neurosurgeon here on the island to see if there is a chance that they can help me um, to improve some physical skills uh, um, um, from my part so the, the battle never stops we always keep fighting we always keep believing and and that's the thing where um, i I support Alton all the, all the way and where I know um, we always give each other up. There's one more question uh, that I see came in. Let me see before. Um, well, we're not going to um, finish with that. Uh, that's a little bit too dark question. I'm going to finish uh, with this. Thank you all for your participation. Um, to keep Innovation Cure live, uh, you can uh, donate now on PayPal, innovationcure at gmail.com. Innovation uh, uh, Curacao um, has been powered by Curadao. Uh, Curadao.io uh, is building a community of a lot of uh, inspired, inspiring Curacao that, that are living uh, on the island and abroad. Um, so please join the community there. Um, and of course, if you want to watch any of our replays, uh, you can find us on LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram. Um, but all these videos will be uploaded on our YouTube page. Uh, please share that also with your, uh, um, with your friends and family and colleagues. We'll be back in, uh, in four weeks. Four weeks, we're gonna be back in four weeks. We're gonna have a little vacation.
Yeah, I'm, I'm coming to to uh, to Corandon and go after slides together with Alton. Alton, don't you think that would that would be great for the inclusive award? See if you could get off the slide. <laughs> that would be amazing. A new, yeah. new record to break. <laughs> yeah, Arthur. Well, uh, thank you everyone for for being here, speakers. Uh, 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 Miguel, Alton, Jason, thank you for participating. Thank you for your patience with me and 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 keep pushing you. And uh, we'll see you all back in four weeks. Peace thank out. You. It's an honor. Bye. Bye. Ciao.